Hey besties, welcome back to my channel. How's our day going so far? I hope you're having a super califragilistic expeditious day. If you're new, welcome. My name is Slack Sirem, and I'm back with another crime case today. So if you're into true crimes or makeup, hit that subscribe button in the face. If you don't, that's also fine, but I would really appreciate if you do. I was talking to my friend the other day, then she asked me, do I ever get overwhelmed by doing all the crime cases? Then I told her, of course. Even though I do get desensitized a lot by watching all the TV shows and movies, but when it comes to true crimes, shit that actually happened in real life, that's just different. It's not even about the negativity, it's the darkness the darkest humanity that's gonna take a huge toll on your mental health, it's gonna make you wonder how can human beings are this awful. Last time we talked about the Hello Kitty murder case, which that was just fucked up. If you haven't watched that yet, go take a look after you watch this video. And in today's video, we're going to talk about something different, something new, a criminal type I haven't talked about in my channel, in this series. I'm talking about the most hated man on the internet, Hunter Moore. So what happened? Let's talk about it. So today's case is gonna piss off a lot of girls. Your blood will be boiling. Just a reminder. I watched the documentary last year, so I'm just gonna follow the storyline from that documentary. That way it's easy to understand. Hunter Moore, he is an American convicted criminal. He was born on March 9, 1986 in Sacramento, California. He's a Pisces. The Rolling Stone magazine called him the most hated man on the internet. You're probably gonna ask, what did he do to deserve this title? Well, one thing I can assure you, the shit that he did was just abominable. In my opinion, he was the online version of Charles Manson. He was that bad. In 2010, Hunter Moore created a website called isanyoneup.com And normally when you see a name like this, you will probably think, oh, is he asking, am I still awake? Because that's how we say it in English. Are you still up? But instead, this is a revenge porn site, which allowed other users to post sexually explicit photos of people online without their consent often accompanied by personal information such as their names and addresses, where do they work, what is their social media, everything. And before sick motherfuckers try to get online and search this website, let me burst your bubbles. This website has already been taken down for years. It doesn't exist anymore. And I'll talk about how did the website got shut down later. Hunter Moore created this website simply to entertain guys, to humiliate women. Not only he allowed other men to post these pictures without the victim's consent, but he also wanted to ruin this girl's lives. He called himself, he gave himself this title, The Life Ruiner. What a fucking asshole, man. And this website, is anyone up? was more like a forum. The website was filled with all the girls' naked picture from all the age group, from young adults to mature, and all the physiques. There were even people who were disabled, like in a wheelchair. Normally, when their pictures being up on this website, there would be comments followed by other users saying, oh, she's a slut. She's a bitch, she's a whore, what a fat cow, let's ruin her life. They will say the most disrespectful, derogatory comments towards these victims. And just to clarify, there were male victims on that website as well, but the majority of the victims were females. I'm not saying when men appeared on that website, it doesn't matter, no. Some bitches might argue, oh, but they took the picture themselves, so they're not so innocent. Listen, one thing we're not gonna do here is a victim blaming. There's nothing wrong on feeling sexy on your body and taking picture of yourself. Whether they decided to keep it to, to themselves or send it to other people, that doesn't give that person the right to post it online without their consent. Now, that's a fucking crime. And so many pictures that appeared on that website were being tricked, hacked, or being taken on spy cams. They didn't even know. Most of the victims didn't even know these photos got leaked and when they found out it was too late because usually 
they don't find out by themselves. It's always from other people who are close to them, like their family, friends, co-workers. That's what these people do on that website. They wanted to destroy the person in that picture, to humiliate them, degrade them, socially annihilate them. There were girls who got fired from their jobs, got kicked out from their schools, got bullied by others, and the worst of all, some people couldn't handle the pressure and committed suicide. That's the power that they have. They can ruin someone's life with just one click. One motherfucking click. <laughs> Kayla Laws. She was born and raised in LA. She's 25 years old at the time. She had a dream of becoming an actress and had a side hustle, side job, working as a waitress in a restaurant. In January 2012, one day at work, she got a phone call from another hostess who wasn't working that night. She told Kayla, Hey, I'm really sorry this happened to you, but you are on this website. Is anyone up? Then she was confused. She was like, how could anyone have my pictures? I didn't send it to anybody. And how did it appear on that website? Immediately, she went on the website. She started scrolling, scrolling. Then when she saw her name appeared on the second page, her heart dropped. So she called her mom, Charlotte Laws. Kayla was panicking, bawling her eyes out and explained what happened to Charlotte. She asked Kayla how the picture gun on that website. So Kayla explained it to Charlotte saying she took them on the privacy in her room and never sent it to anyone. Her cell phone was ran out of space so she sent the photos to her email because back then there was no iCloud. There was no apps that we can upload our pictures to store in that app. It's not like nowadays when you get an iPhone, you get like two gigabytes of iCloud space, which it does nothing, bitch. Okay, here's the thing. This is just my own opinion. If we're spending that much money on a phone nowadays, the cloud space should be unlimited. Why the fuck do we have to spend that much money on a fucking phone, then spend extra money on cloud space? to save the photos that we took that's for us that's like literally the photos of me why do I have to pay to save my photo? that doesn't make any fucking sense what the fuck Tim Cook? what the fuck capitalism? what the fuck is this shit? does it make any sense to you? because it doesn't but I digress Kayla also mentioned that the week earlier before this incident happened, she had been locked out of all her social medias, so she had to reset the password. When Charlotte got off the phone with Kayla, she got right into work on the computer because shit travels like herpes on the internet. And before you know where the pictures can be anywhere, so time is ticking now. So on Hunter Moore's website, there is a request option. Basically, people can submit a request and asking Hunter Moore to take down the pictures. And that's what Charlotte and Kayla did. They sent out a request, explained everything, saying that Kayla was being hacked and it was never her intention to be on the website. Hoping that this will appeal to Hunter Moore's human side and take down the photos. And surprisingly, he did. Kagwansiao. Bitch, if he actually did, I wouldn't be sitting here talking about this case today, wouldn't I? But anyway, what are you guys eating right now? Let me know in the comments. So, as a matter of fact, he did respond. He said, you need to show me the proof if it was being hacked, which... That doesn't make any fucking sense, like what the fuck? So they replied back with the proof. Then it was... Crickets. Silence. Hunter Moore posted his attorney's information on his page, so Charlotte contacted his lawyer. And here's the fucked up part that's gonna blow your fucking mind. According to American Law, Section 230 on Communication and Decency Act, website owners are not genuinely responsible for content on the website if its users submit it. All he did was provided a forum for people to put up the pictures. So according to the law, he didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing the law can do about it. 
Two days after Kayla's picture appeared on that website, she gained more than 1,000 followers, which that's not a good thing. These are not good attractions. These were not the people who followed Kayla because they liked her style, her personality, and her look. These were the men who wanted to destroy her life, harassing her on the internet. So Kayla deactivated all of her social medias, depressed, curved in a ball, crying every single day in her room, but the harassment didn't stop there. She would receive random calls from men across the states, calling her names, calling her, you're a bitch, we're gonna find you and rape you, saying all the awful, awful things to her. You know what's so fucked up is, there were people who think he's so smart, he's so innovative, he found a new way to make money, and he has cult followers. He has an entire army behind his back. They see him as God, worship him, call him father, and they have an organization and they call themselves The Family. His website was getting 350,000 attractions daily, and if you time that by 30, that's millions of attractions every month. That's just insane. They just mindlessly follow him and do whatever he says. If he says, punch yourself in the face, they will literally do that, record a video, and send it to Hunter Moore to post. On the fourth day after the incident that happened, mind you, it's only been four days, but they were going all avenues and trying everything to get that picture taken down. Charlotte called him, his agents, his publicist, everyone that she could think. Charlotte also saw Kayla's friend's pictures appeared on that website, so she reached out to her and asked her, and she told Charlotte that these pictures were stolen, hacked from her personal email, that she never sent them to anybody. Then she smelled something fishy. Um, I have only knew two people that's on this website, and both of them are being hacked. That's not a motherfucking coincidence. On day five, Charlotte went to the Los Angeles police station with Kayla, explained the situation to a female officer. The officer responded, why would you take a picture if you know this will end up on the internet? <sighs> a moment of silence for this. You would have thought, usually when, when it comes to a situation like this, women will be more understanding and supportive. <sighs> but apparently, some women are just products of this toxic patriarchy society. Although Hunter Moore wasn't breaking any laws by creating that website, but hacking is definitely illegal. Who is well known for catching serial killers and cybersecurity? The FBI. So Charlotte contacted the FBI and explained everything. The FBI promised her that they would investigate and there would be three agents reaching out to her, but there was no immediate action. The pictures were still on the internet. That is her main concern, which is Kayla's picture was still on that website. She needs to take that shit down right now, right away. So that's when Charlotte finally decided to tell her husband, Charles, as a lawyer, a middle-aged man who reads books, newspaper, and doesn't really use or tear the internet. So when Charlotte and Kayla told him the whole thing, he just brushed them off. He just thought, oh, that's no big of a deal. Who's going to remember that in a month? Nobody. But Here's the thing, he forgot the part that once it's on the internet, it'll be there forever. If you don't take action right now, she would just proliferate. That's why the internet is a double-edged sword. It gives you all the information that you need, but it also has the power to fuck you up. Charlotte knew that in order to stop Hunter Moore, she needs proof that he is responsible for the hacking. So, <clears throat> oh my god, I just... <laughs> choked on my own spit. So 
she decided to get the evidence herself. She started to reach out to a lot of victims who were on that website. She's trying to find out as much information as possible. Where Shella is doing the research, one day there was a fax coming over. And Charles was the first one who saw the fax. And the fax reads, Hey ugly bitch, get off Hunter's dick. If you don't, we will find you and rape you and put a shotgun down your throat. That's when Charles realized this shit is serious and he needs to take action right now. So he contacted Hunter Moore's lawyer. He asked him to take down Kayla's photo right away in 30 minutes. Otherwise, they will take legal actions. They will sue his ass. But to Kayla, Charles is her stepdad, which is not going to cost any money. And the only person who's going to end up paying thousands of dollars to lawyer is Hunter Moore. And time went by, up to 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, countless of refreshing the pages, the pictures finally being taken down. Now it's time to move on, right? No more harassment, no more slut shaming. It's a new chapter. Let's put a period on this and let's just get past that. But Charlotte, on the other hand, she was like, nope. Hunter Moore hurt so many people. There are so many victims that are out there whose lives got ruined because of Hunter Moore. I'm gonna destroy him. And whoever comes for my daughter, I'm gonna come for him. Charlotte Lott is an interesting woman. Back in the days, in the 80s and the 90s, she was quite something. She was known for crashing big Hollywood parties without an invitation. People called her the celebrity chaser. She was on Oprah and even wrote a book about it. So you can kind of know her personality. If somebody tells her, oh, you cannot do this, you shouldn't do this, she will be like, bitch, watch me do this. She studied compelling all the evidence from the moment she wakes up in the morning until she goes to bed at night. By the end of February 2012, she had already spoken with 40 victims and she discovered that 40% of them never sent out the pictures that they took. It was just saved up on their phone or email and just got hacked. She reached out to many reporters. If anybody wants to take on her case, then you know what this reporter said to her? They told her, you don't have a story here. So she created a website, so she posted a story on her blog. After only minutes of posting that story, bitch, whole her, like, her whole, what? Her whole website got hacked, immediately got hacked by the family. They changed her password and she was not able to log back in anymore. So everything just back to square one. Weeks went by, the FBI agents finally reached out. I know. But when the law enforcement are trying to investigate, it doesn't happen right away. It takes a lot of time. The FBI agents discovered that when Kayla got back her email after being hacked, there was a secondary email linked under her email. And this person, whoever the fuck that is, is now able to access her email. The secondary email account was garyjones815 at gmail.com. So who the fuck is Gary Jones? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's too far. Well, FBI is working on searching who is Gary Jones. Uh, we're gonna introduce another new member to this story. But before that, I'm going to put on some lashes and Get some tissues because my nose is watering and it just suddenly gets cold in my room. I don't know why. So I'll be right back. James. He is a web entrepreneur. He has a lot of websites. He also managed websites for other people. But before that, he worked as a cybersecurity in the US Marine. One day he got a call from Hunter Moore asking if he's interested in working for his website. Is anyone up? At first, James thought, what an interesting name. Without knowing what the website actually was, he went on the website, saw all the naked pictures of the girls followed by derogatory comments, their home address. He immediately felt the anger 
boiled up inside of his stomach. That reminded his childhood because growing up he was bullied. He grew up in a very abusive home. His father was very abusive towards his mother and used to beat the shit out of her mother with a frying pan. So the police had to... Bitch, where's my beauty blender? So the police had to take away from him and his brother. So ever since then, he hasn't seen his mother and his brother. So James told Hunter that he would help him for his website. That's how he infiltrated himself to get the trust from Hunter Moore. So he can get to the bottom of this and collect as much evidence as he can. He decided to mindfuck Hunter. He asked Hunter Moore, how do you verify the age of the girls because I just pulled the accept data and apparently this girl in the picture who claims to be 19 is actually 14. That's when Hunter Moore got scared. He's like, oh my god, what the fuck should I do because a child pornography is a huge crime that's gonna get him a lot of years behind bars. James realized that Hunter Moore is at the most vulnerable stage right now. He is panicking, scared, helpless, and that's the perfect moment to strike. Because, you know, if you want to take someone down, you do it when they're at the weakest and lowest moment. So Hunter Moore sold the website to James for $12,000 with a one string attached from James. James asked Hunter Moore to write an open apology letter and this dumb bitch did. But little did he know, James forwarded this website as anyoneup.com to an anti-bullying website that he had created himself. So from then, if somebody ever wanted to access it as anyone up, when they type this in a, a browser, it will redirect them to an anti-bullying website that has Hunter Moore's apology letters to all the victims that he had hurt. Hunter Moore, on the other hand, he started going on all the podcasts, national televisions, faking a persona saying that he's sorry, he was a bully, he was never meant to hurt anybody, he is more, more mature, he is a different man now. He also received a lot of hate from the family, his cult followers, because they thought he was a quitter. They were blaming him selling the website. They were like, how can you sell this website? Like, what should we do without this website? We need this website. I'm like, get a fucking life. Go outside and touch some grass. What the fuck is wrong with you? But obviously that didn't last long. Shit took a turn very fast. He is now again showing his true color. He posted something on Twitter. He said, Is anyone up it was a stepping stone? The new side is going to cause murders. There is still one final piece missing to the puzzle, which is Gary Jones. The FBI found out that the person behind this email, Gary Jones, a15 at gmail.com his real identity his name is Charlie Evans a regular guy has a girlfriend nothing special about him that can connect him with Hunter Moore so in order to catch Hunter Moore the FBI needs to make a connection between both of them so they submitted a court order that way they can look into their email conversations the FBI discovered a pattern. Every time after conversation that they had through email, there will be new photos posted on that website. Although that wasn't the last nail to put on his coffin, but was enough to request a search warrant. On May 15, 2012, the FBI showed up at Hunter Moore's parents' house. That's where he's residing at the moment. They confiscated, they took every technology that he had. His phone, his laptop, flash drive, what else? USB, everything. After he got raided by the FBI, he posted something on Twitter saying that he's gonna make a new website and this time he's gonna bring back all the old pictures. And along with the victim's address and the direction of how to get to their address. When Charlotte saw what he posted, she fired the first shot. 
Basically, she was trying to say the victims are going to unite together this time. We're not scared of you. So she posted Hunter Moore's personal address. Then Hunter Moore clapped back saying, gonna post your daughter's picture tonight. I'm gonna ruin her in a fun way, along with all the nasty comments, death threats from the family. They were saying shit like, how about we find you first and kill you? and shoot you in the head. Sometimes on December 2012, a guy named Jack reached out to Charlotte saying that he is from the online group Anonymous. So if you don't know what Anonymous is, Anonymous is an online organization that's filled with the greatest hackers all around the world. If there's a one organization you shouldn't mess with, it's anonymous. They put out a video the next day saying they are gonna destroy Hunter Moore. And let me tell you bitch, you would never believe the shit that they did to Hunter Moore because it was just so funny. They wiped out all the data from Hunter Moore's server. They erased his social security number and deactivated his passport. <laughs> in case he flee the country. They also hacked into his bank account and transferred the money from the bank account to women abusive shelters. They shipped hundreds of dildos to his house. Then they declared him dead. Bitch, honestly, I don't know how did they execute everything. I'm just so curious, like how did he do that? That is, that is insane. As the truth slowly coming out of the surface, the FBI found out that Hunter Moore was paying Charlie Evans to hack for him. He told Charlie to hack as many pictures as he can so he can post it on his website and he was paying him $200 per week. It's just so, so gross. Get the shit out of my fucking face, bitch. Now with all the evidence, they are able to arrest both of them. On January 24th, 2014, yes that's right, after another year, Charlie Evans and Hunter Moore finally got arrested. Bitch, don't move! I can draw. But Hunter was released to his parents on a thousand dollar bound. Hunter Moore and his lawyer kept pushing the court date because he didn't want it to go to prison. That's why he kept postponing it. Ultimately, Hunter Moore and Charlie Evans pleading to one count of unauthorized access to protective computer system to obtain information and one count of aggravated identity theft. On December 2nd, 2015, during their sentencing, Hunter Moore's lawyer argued that Hunter Moore has changed ever since. He's now a different person now and they tried to deflect the blame to Charlie, saying that he was the prolific hacker here. He had done most of the work. Hunter Moore here only just provided a space for people to share pictures. During the trial, Charlie turned around and said to Kayla, I'm so sorry, while Hunter Moore was just sitting there looking very unremorseful. In the end, Hunter Moore received the sentence of 30 months. <laughs> yeah. Charlie received the sentence of 25 months. Hunter Moore was also banned from using social medias by the judge. Bitch, like, that's gonna do anything. They're both out of the prison now. I don't know what the fuck are they actually doing, to be honest. But when I was doing the research a couple of days ago, I saw Hunter Moore was on a podcast talking about how he just felt so sorry back in the day and he's now a different person. How many times did I say this? He's now a different person, but do we actually believe that he's now a different person? Fuck no. And he's now 36 years old. So, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like the sentencing is too short. It's literally like, are you fucking kidding me kind of short. So, would you believe Hunter Moore is a different person now? Let me know in the comments. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. And remember, be safe, be vigilant, and take care.